This video is about a topic I have great fascination for. How do some business entrepreneurs succeed and some fail? Is the most important reason for success luck? When this is the topic, we must talk about Bill Gates. In 1980, Gates and a few fellow programmers had a small company in Seattle. IBM approached them about developing an operating system for personal computers that it was about to launch. Bill Gates didn't think this was something for them, so they turned IBM down. Luckily for Gates, IBM came back and Gates got the assignment. This was the start of Windows, who has made Bill Gates one of the richest people on earth. Think if IBM had invented the computer five years earlier. Then Bill Gates most likely would not have used his computer skills to develop operating systems for computers. Today, I'm going to talk about the Norwegian fisherman that started working as a fisher at the age of 18 and became one of Norway's richest person. His companies have over 20,000 employees today. The story is about Shell Ingerokja. Some short facts. He is 63 years of age and was born in 1958. He was Norway's 8th richest person in 2021. His net worth is estimated to be $4 billion in 2021. Let's start the history about how Shell Inge ended up as one of the richest people in Norway. Shell Inge Rokja grew up in the little Norwegian city Mold. Shell Inge was diagnosed with dyslexia from an early age. Because of the dyslexia, he didn't perform well in school. His parents were disillusioned and thought he was headed no place. His teachers gave up on him. One teacher said, I don't even think you are going to get a driver's license. You are not smart enough. One morning, his mother woke him up and said, You are going to work. She managed to get him a job on a fishing boat. By the time he was 17 years old, he was fishing for cod in the Barents Sea on a trawler named F.T. Svalbard. He started at the very bottom rung on the ship as an engine room oiler, but showed he was a hard worker with ambition and worked his way up to deck. Then luck comes into the picture again. Schellinger was convinced by a friend that he should go to Seattle and seek hire on fishing boats there because one could earn a lot of money fishing outside Alaska. Schellinger arrived in America with big plans for his future and a dream of owning his own fish boat. The young Schellinger Rokja was obsessed with money and didn't take any breaks from his work. Usually, the routine was that the boat had double crew, so when one crew had worked their shift, another continued. Shell Inge didn't want any breaks, so for many months, he just worked, slept, and ate all his meals on the boat. After two years, Shell Inge had saved enough money to buy his own boat. He called the boat Karina, and from there on, it was nothing but success. No. It didn't go that way. It seldom does. A lot of business entrepreneurs experience failures before they succeed. This was also the case with Shell Inge. For five years, Shell Inge worked day and night at his fishing boat. He had three boats, but at the end, all failed. Luckily for Shell Inge, this was not the end. And there is the theme with luck again. Another fisher, Robert Breskovich, saw the potential in the young Norwegian, and together they bought a new boat. Schellinger was to work all the time as he was used to, and Robert Breskovich provided most of the money for the purchase and running cost until they could sell the first fish they caught. The two guys saw an opportunity in the market for crabbing boats. They rebuilt two boats so they could fish for crabs. They had their ups and downs, and they also lost a fishing boat where three employees died in an accident caused by bad weather. The relatives after one of the deceased took Rokja and Breskovich to court. They argued that Rokja and Breskovich forced the ship out to fish although they knew bad weather was coming. The court found the businessmen innocent. The court ruled that if someone was to be blamed, it was the captain of the boat. Robert Breskovich admired Shell Inge, but found him hard to work with. 
He once stated there are thousands of Norwegians coming to America, but there is only one Schelling Yerokia. Schellinger sold his shares in his businesses with Robert Breskovich, and they took different business paths. In 1988, Schellinger founded American Seafood. Schellinger made a genius strategy. He bought three old boats, sailed them to Norway, where he got government subsidies to rebuild the boats to factory trawlers. Shell Inge's boat was top notch, and they were able to fish more and much more efficient than its competitors. Shell Inge revolutionized the fishing industry. Usually, a fish boat would fish on the sea and deliver the fish on shore to a factory. The factory would process the fish into many different fish products. Shell Inge made his factories on board his boats, so he didn't need the factory on shore anymore. This was genius, and he could sell his fish with greater profit than most of his competitors. Money came pouring in, and Shell Inge was on the top of his game. He began to acquire assets of other companies as they faltered in the tricky market. In just one year, his company controlled 40% of the pollock harvest that American companies were allowed to fish. Shell Inge wanted more. His boats could fish much more, but they weren't allowed to fish more in American waters. Before we continue the story about Shell Inge, we must talk about Russia or the Soviet Union in the late 80s and early 90s. In 1985, Gorbachev came to power, and he started the process called Glasnost. From being a state-controlled economy, Soviet Union suddenly shifted to an economy similar to the Western countries. The economy collapsed, and there was no central government or local government that controlled important resources like fishing rights. Soviet Union, USA, Canada, and Norway had a fish agreement about fishing in the Barents Sea. Without any functional coast guard or local authorities in the Soviet Union, anyone could fish under the Soviet Union flag. Now we must go back to Shell Inge. Two Norwegian authors have, in their books, explained how Shell Inge paid corrupt Soviet Union officials to get permits to fish in the Barents Sea. All the fish they caught, they delivered in America. Shell Inge could fish as much as he wanted. His boats could deliver fish in America, beating his competitors. What did Shell Inge pay for these permits? In a podcast, one close associated to Shell Inge explains how he drove cars from Norway stacked with food and electronic to the Soviet Union. This was a cheap payment. When the estimated net profit for each boat was almost a hundred thousand dollars, the classic fisherman fished where he lived and passed his knowledge and the resources on to the next generation. Shell Inge was among the first modern fishers that used big factory trawler boats to fish. To sum up, this grip made it possible for Shell Inge to fish more, faster, and deliver fish more often to the market. All this led to Shell Inge earning tons of money. In 1994, Shell Inge was forced to sell his company because of a new anti-foreign ownership bill that was passed in America. He moved back to Norway with over 200 million dollars, ready to spend at new business adventures. In my next video, I will continue telling the story about Shell Inge's way to become one of Norway's richest person. I will tell the story how he was convicted for bribing his way to a boat certificate, and how he rented a torpedo to help him out of a jam. This video you must watch. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on it.